Okay, so let's look at Google Map integration. So the first thing we'll do is we'll download the source code. Just takes a little minute. And then we'll extract that onto the disk and we should be able to then integrate into Google Maps. Okay, so let's extract it. Again, just takes a little minute to extract the files. Okay, so here we are. So we'll just open up the solution. It's going to open up Visual Studio in this case as a program written in .NET, which makes a convenient way to, to be able to integrate with Google Maps. And again, it just takes a little minute to load up. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to select the network tab and then location. From there we'll add in the get map. So if we look at what is actually happening in get map, it basically takes an IP address. It can it it gets the the domain name or the IP address from this text box here. It then does a lookup on the domain name, if it's a domain name, and returns back an IP address. Then we return that into one of our boxes. After that, we use a service which will do a, a lookup on the, on the IP address to find the location that it's been registered and this will return back uh, a string here. We then pick off the longitude and the latitude to give us the longitude and latitude values when we parse the, the XML, which is contained in the, the return there. The next part is the Google Maps API keys and then what we do is we build up the the URL that we send to Google Maps and that includes the size of the map the marker that we have and any labels and we can also have a zoom value so the ampersand splits the parameters that we are passing. So in this case, the zoom is passed through the tracker three component value. And then here, 
we define the center of the map with the longitude and the latitude. We can also define the map type. And then we basically just pass this into our URL, which is in the middle of the screen. Okay, so if we actually have a look at what we have here, just open up a client. Okay, so we'll select location. And here we see so the the domain name is is entered here. And then there is an, an IP lookup to give us this IP address. When we do a find it will call the get map find out the longitude and latitude and then use that to plot the Google map here. Okay, so, so we'll just add our get map method. So it looks like that already exists, so we'll just try and find out what it is as a method. And we should be able to find it here. So we'll just replace that with our own one. And there we go. So now let's run this and let's see if it works. So we'll select location. We only have one option just now, but uh, we'll try and find Google. And there we go. So it's, it's located Google for us in near Palo Alto. And we can see here it's put our little marker in so for the next part we can add more options into our combo box 
computers. Right, so what we'll do is we'll add some more domains into our combo box. And we'll just check to see the event that happens. And it's the selected index event. So what should hopefully happen is it'll take the value from the combo box and put it into the text box and then call up get map again. And that's what it does. It takes a selected item when we change the combo box, gives it to the text box, and then shows the get map. So let's try that again. And hopefully, this time we'll be able to select from a number of domains. So uh, as before, it will do a domain lookup for the IP address. We then ask a, a service to resolve the IP address to a longitude and latitude, which we parse, and then we send that to the Google Map. and the location of our site. For the next part, what we'll do is that we'll add an option to actually view the site. So on this button here, we just click there, takes what's in the text box and then calls up Internet Explorer as a process and we may as well just add the buttons. So now we'll uh, view Google Map in different options such as with the road map. So we'll just select our radio button and we'll just add that into there. So if we have a look at get map, it'll actually show us how that works. So basically it looks at each of the radio buttons and if they're set, then it sets the map type parameter for Google Maps to whatever type that we actually want. So in this case, either road map or satellite. We'll add some more of these types here later. So let's slide the location again. So the default is a roadmap. Uh, we'll do a find. And then 
we'll change it to, to satellite. Okay, so this is the default roadmap. Change it to satellite, and we can see a satellite view, and so on. So in the final part of this, we'll have a look at the slider zoom. Okay, so if we go back to our design, and here's a useful little control, which is a slider which allows us to, which will allow us to move in and out of the map by varying the zoom parameter. Okay, so we can set the minimum and the maximum. So in this case, the minimum is set to 1, the maximum to 16. So that will give us our zoom levels. The current value is 8, which puts it right around the middle. And then we can go and change the value changed event. So when this is called, this is called whenever the value in the scroller actually changes. So let's see if we can find out what that's doing. So it calls up get map and the place that that happens to be added. And here is where the, the value is added. So there's a, a zoom parameter. When we call the Google Maps API, and it'll take this value here. So whatever the value of the slider is, then it will use that for the zoom. So let's give it a try. Let's see if it's working. Let's do a look up. And then the zoom allows us to zoom in and out. And we can go to different levels of magnification.